In August 2018, I took a trip to Selhurst in the South London borough of Croydon to look at a property that had what you could say was easy access to rail links. I'm just around the corner from Selhurst train station. In fact, our house is here. And the train line is there. Not great if you value your peace and quiet. However, if you're a train spotter, awesome. Now, our house is an end of terrace three bed, which came with a guide price of £250,000 plus. Let's go look. Inside, well, straight away I can tell this house is pretty dilapidated. You've got your paintwork coming off the banister. You've got some central heating. You want to check it's up to scratch. Textured wallpaper dating the place, the carpets. They've definitely seen better days. And your reception room, that's a really good size. You do have double glazing, but it's old metal frames. Looks like it could do with an upgrade and also sounds like it too from the noise I can hear from the traffic from that busy main road. Through to a second reception room. So you've plenty of living space down here. And then your kitchen, which is an okay size. I'd like to see this opened up. Always consult a structural engineer because I can tell that's a loads bearing wall. Now this is a new one on me. This looks like like an old shower area. So this is where you'd have your shower. Splish, splash, splash. I just hoped there was a partition and shower curtain at the window, otherwise the neighbours might have got an eyeful. Apart from removing the kitchen wall, creating more space down here could be achieved by taking down the chimney breast. Another job for a structural engineer to advise on. And of course, if the chimney breast comes out downstairs, if there's one upstairs, you'll either have to also take that out or make sure it's supported. I always think if you've got a bedroom that's so small you'd struggle to get a single bed in it, it's got a bit of a cheek calling itself a bedroom. Your second bedroom, however, is a really, really good size. It needs a lot of love and care. Your bathroom, really good size as well. Turquoise suite tells me it's pretty dated. You want something new in there. And then through to, again, a brilliantly sized double bedroom. The wallpaper is peeling off. I mean, look at this. Not only is it peeling off, but it's pretty clear to see that you've got a problem with damp here. That damp is penetrating through and likewise towards the ceiling. You need to find out the root cause of that. So that guide price of £250,000 plus seemed a wee bit too good to be true for a three bed in London. And it kind of is because one bedroom's really small. But for that guide price, I wouldn't expect perfection. And there's certainly a lot you could do to make this more of a perfect family home. While that layout inside could have made this a nice place to live, the same couldn't be said for the garden. Not the most inspiring of gardens, I grant you. You might expect a bit more land with an end of terrace house. It's triangular in shape, so a little bit awkward. But then again, we're in London. It's good to have any kind of garden. But as I look to the sides, now this is where it gets interesting. Just now on your land, you have a garage, but you could think about asking for planning permission to extend maybe one story or even two stories to make that third bedroom that's tiny bigger or create a fourth bedroom. You have to find out, talk to local estate agents, if it's worth spending the money, if you would recoup it in profit. There may well be a ceiling price in this area for similar kinds of houses, but it's definitely just got a lot more interesting. Potential was the word for this lot, guided at 250,000 pounds. But who was tempted at auction? I'm South Norwood, three bed end of terraced house. Who'd like to start off on this? Uh, must be around 300 this. 250. 250. 255. You with you, 255. 260, yeah? 265. 270. Come to you, 275. 280. That low guide price for a London house was attracting lots of interest, and soon the bidding has reached £358,000. 358. 360. 358. Now's your third one. 362. 364. Yep. 366, sir. 
three, six, four with you. First time, second time, third and last time. Have you all done? All done, three, six, four. Those successful bidders were Pauline and Chris. They weren't newbies to Homes Under the Hammer, having already made several appearances on the show before. They'd recently renovated this 1930s semi-detached house, giving it a great new look. They had plans to do the same to this house, which was their 10th in a line of renovation projects that stretched back to 2013. How does this compare to other ones that you've done? This one's going to be a bit different, isn't it? Because we might extend build kind of Yeah, thing. we're hoping to have a whole new build thanks, well, where the garage is. So it's not just a straight refurb this time. It's we're going to be hopefully building something new. It's deceptively large plot out there because it's a bit of a triangular plot of land, but uh, hopefully we'll get a two, three bedroom house on there. We've got the architects who came and measured up the other day and we're just waiting for them to come back to uh, see what they suggest what we can build. He thought it was possible? Don't know yet. Yeah, th we think we can get something there. It's a question of what. Yeah. I think originally we would have liked to convert, like build, extend, as you say, and uh, turn this to two flats, wasn't it? But we found out from about the council that they're not that too keen on losing their three beds, bedroom properties. Ah. So that's why we thought maybe we have to do something else. Pauline and Chris saved themselves a lot of time and money by researching what the council favoured for the area, be it houses, flats or commercial. They might have had one idea when first looking at the property, but experienced developers always need to be adaptable. And while they were waiting for planning consent, Pauline and Chris weren't going to be idle. What we'll do, we'll quick, quickly renovate this house, probably let it out for a year while we do that work, and then once it's all finished, we'll sell both of them. Now, what's your budget? Um, to renovate this house, you're probably looking about 30,000, maybe 35. To build a new house next door, you're probably looking 100, 150. The pair had planned to have the house renovated in three months, and if they got that planning approval, the new build was going to be done in a year. Eleven months later, we returned, and it looked like everything had gone to plan. With two front doors, it all looked promising, but things weren't quite as they seemed. It's just an illusion. Our original plan was to renovate this house and build a second house next door. But um, speaking to the architect and pre-planning meetings with the council, we've gone for a two-flat option. So we still extended as much as we were going to before, but instead now we've got a ground floor flat and an upper flat that's gone into the loft. So despite the concerns that flats would not be favoured by the planning authority, that got turned on its head when they actually consulted them. As it turned out, there was a demand in the area for two and three bed flats. So with the change of plan came a change of layout. The downstairs flat is going to be a nice three bedroom flat. So we've got bedroom where the living room was, got bedroom behind me, and into the extension where the garage used to be, we've got a bedroom and a bathroom there. Upstairs, we've got um, a lovely two-bed flat, so it's quite spacious because we've gone into the loft, so we've got a lovely ensuite bedroom in the loft space and a lovely um, open-plan kitchen living space on the first floor with a lovely uh, bifold, or we will have a lovely bifold door going out as a nice balcony area, so that'll be a super flat up there. These flats sounded like they were going to be pretty special, and Pauline and Chris had got started with the work just three months earlier. Well, I say Pauline and Chris. We've actually had a new team of builders. Yeah, we've had a really good team in, which is great, because I've just been more... Hands off. Well, I don't know, hands off, yes. Yeah, so I've done no work on this one. He's just been all. a bit more chilled, because he's not involved so much. He used to be, like, stressed Eric when, he's, when he was working, and then he used to do my head in because I'd come home and give it Lars, you know. Oh, I've been grafting all day. Yawn. Yeah, so uh, uh, he can't say that now. He's been gymming a lot and uh, out on his bike, you know. 
So this had been a relatively stress-free project and their top budget of 185 grand was still on track. That budget's still about right. I mean, the, the great advantage of having a builder rather than doing it yourself is he gives you a price and that's it. He has to deliver on that price. And we're probably about three quarters of the way in, so. Yeah, it's not gonna be long now. In fact, the couple were hoping to have the flats ready for the rental market in three months. So join us later in the show to see just how Pauline and Chris's final product looked. It's back now to Selhurst in the southeast London borough of Croydon and this three-bed semi-detached house which I saw in the summer of 2018. Everything about it was tired. There was nothing to quicken the pulse, but that all changed once I stepped into the rear yard. On your land, you have a garage, but you could think about asking for planning permission to extend maybe one story or even two stories. It's definitely just got a lot more interesting. Equally interested were Pauline and Chris and their daughter Molly. They bought the house for 364 grand. They'd been on the show before and with nine previous projects completed since 2013, they weren't going to be short of the necessary experience for this job. How does this compare to other ones that you've done? This one's going to be a bit different, isn't it? Because we might extend build kind of Yeah, thing. we're hoping to have a whole new build thanks, well, where the garage is. So hopefully we'll get a two, three bedroom house on there. With a total budget of 185 grand, the couple had gone for two separate houses because they thought their original plans to convert and extend the house into two flats would not get local planning approval. But lo and behold, when we returned 11 months later in July 2019, building work was well underway and they got what they originally wanted. Pre-planning meetings with the council, we've gone for a two flat option. So we still extended as much as we were going to before. But instead, now we've got a ground floor flat and an upper flat that's gone into the loft. Pauline and Chris had hired a builder to do this project, and there was still quite a bit of work to be done. But it was only two months later that we returned to see the final product. Two doors for two flats. On the ground floor is the three bedroom flat with one bedroom at the front, another at the rear, and the third in the new extension, complete with ensuite. The main plus here is the open plan kitchen living area. It's a good size, but as Chris explains, it was once planned to be bigger. So we're on our final inspection, we're building control, and he decided we needed to add this uh, wall. So we're uh, literally uh, painting it this morning. There's a bit of filling to be done still. Uh, the problem was for him, he wanted a bit of fire separation from the kitchen to the bedrooms. So he uh, made us put this wall in. So this room is a little bit small and a little bit darker now, which is not great, but we've got better acoustics and obviously fire separation for the, uh, for the bedroom. So it's a bit of a win-lose. Well, the new layout is definitely a winner here, especially with a stunning new bathroom suite in the extension. But creating a larger footprint for the house meant the loss of space in the rear yard. It does mean, though, that the two-bedroom flat upstairs can now have a marvellous new balcony, an ideal spot to relax. Those bifold doors now lead into the flat's open-plan kitchen living room. I think the big change from July f would be the, the bifold doors that have gone in there. Yeah. So now you can see the great balcony. I want bifolds in my house, so that'd be fine to have that. It just increases the and living space, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, once you open that up, it's straight out from this room to the balcony, and it's just be lovely in summer. Also on this floor is a double bedroom, a small office and a family bathroom. But just when you think Pauline and Chris have used every cubic inch of this house, there is more. The second good-sized bedroom can be found upstairs with its own loo and shower. There's just no shortage of rooms in this place. We have got two properties out of it, you know, instead of the one. You know, I think this has been a departure from what we've normally done in the other 
um, projects other than nine we've just done straightforward renovations i think this is the first time we've actually split a property up and extended up and back and to the side so we've done everything we could to this fortunately for the couple there were no real problems on their first project involving real building works there was a delay in getting planning consent for the extension but they still managed to get everything done in 14 months pretty good going i'd say well the great thing about this project is we just had a builder that took on the whole project normally i sort of project manage and do bits myself but with this one it was just sort of a turnkey kind of thing the builder gave us a price and obviously we're stuck with that price sort of regardless so the budget's been fairly stuck around i think about 200 ish <coughs> Added to their purchase price of 364 grand, and Pauline and Chris have spent 564,000 pounds. Time to find out the thoughts of two local property experts and who better than the pair who saw it before. It's nice to see the finished product. They really seem to have eked out every corner of space here. So that's the highlight for me. And in terms of what they've done, you can see the finish is good. Having a look at it today, um, I'm quite pleased with the final finish of the property. The vendors have actually done the absolute best for this property. They've totally maxed out the uh, potential for this, for this property. They couldn't have actually done a better job. Really nice to see some outside space with the ground floor neatly done. And on the first floor, the real highlight is obviously the bifold doors onto a massive balcony. With that positive feedback from the agents, what sort of returns do they reckon Pauline and Chris could make if they let out the flats? I would expect the two-bedroom first floor split level flat to be in the region of £1,450 per calendar month. The three-bedroom ground floor unit I would expect to be in the region of £1,650 per calendar month. The ground floor three-bedroom property would be £1,750 per calendar month and the rental value for the first and second floor split level of Masonette would be £1,500 per calendar month. We just um, locked in with a local letting agency at the, sort of the top end of those valuations, so yeah, they do sound about right. Those upper valuations could bring in an annual yield of nearly 7%. Not bad going. The agents also reckoned that the two flats could sell for a combined total of £740,000. That would give the couple a potential pre-tax profit of 176 grand. They might not be too far wrong. I think they're a little bit soft, though. There's no point fight doing a fire sale and knocking the flats out cheaply when we don't have to. With six years of turning around properties behind them, I reckon Pauline and Chris know exactly what they're doing. And they have a good tip for any budding developers out there. There's no real such thing as hot spots. Once it's a hot spot, it's, it's too late. So it'd be stick local, then you can keep an eye on your builders, you understand the market better, you can keep an eye on your tenants, keep an eye on your property. So I'd, I'd always invest local, I'd never go too far afield.